Serious topic. Redditors who have killed someone, by mistake or on purpose, what happened? And how has it affected your life? Throw away account, for obvious reasons. When I was 12, I was babysitting for a family in my subdivision. There were two little girls, three, and six, and a five-month-old baby. I had experienced babysitting, but wasn't great with babies. I was real nervous, and not the most responsible slash adult kid anyway. The girls were sitting on the living room floor reading, and the baby started crying from her crib. I picked her up, and took her into the kitchen to warm up her milk bottle in the microwave. I simply dropped her. I have been over this 1000 times in my head, and there is no other way I can explain it. I dropped her, and her head hit the tile floor. She was very clearly dead immediately. The weirdest part is how calm I felt, like I turned into a robot. I told the girls to go to the basement immediately, and called my dad, and told him what happened. Then I sat at the kitchen table for 10 minutes, while he came over. He drove the girls to our house to be with my mom, then drove me, and the body to the hospital. Obviously nothing could be done. I was not charged because it was ruled an accidental death. There was a chance I could have been charged with criminally negligent manslaughter but was not, in part because of my age. This was several decades ago, and I still feel it every day. I am a woman, and do not think I can ever have children because of it. The family moved but until they did, I had to throw up every time I drove past their house, or saw one of them in the community. Damn. That's pretty dark. But I would never leave a baby that young with a babysitter that young. I don't think children should be babysitters. Not only that, but she's watching two other kids. That's a lot for a 12 year old, and adding a baby on top of that. This is exactly why I'm afraid to hold babies. I'm a 24 year old male, and I refuse to hold babies unless I'm sitting down. I'm terrified of dropping them. While I did not actually murder someone, my slow action, or lack of proper action caused a stranger's child to die. While I was living abroad for a time, I encountered a little girl wandering out into a busy road, I was later told that her mother was apparently distracted by another kid, but I was not aware of this at the time. I clearly remember trying to push her out of the way of an oncoming car, but I did not push her hard enough, and she was still struck, as was I. She died in the hospital, whereas I suffered spinal injuries. The mother, naturally blamed me. But I don't really remember everything she said to me that clearly. I relive that day frequently, even now seven years later. I tell myself, what if I had tried to pull her instead? What if I had tried to shield her instead? What if I had done nothing? I keep trying to think of another way it all could have happened that means I don't have to think about it anymore. That day caused a lot of things in my life to change for the worse, I broke up with my then GF, my health suffered, I distanced myself from my already strained family relationships. I can honestly say that if it wasn't for my girlfriend that I have now, I would have ended my life before now. I could go on, but this pretty much the gist of it. Edit, thank you, to whomever gifted me Reddit Gold, and an extra thank you to those of you with kind words to give. I was 11, visiting a Santa Cruz beach for the first time with my best friend, and her family. We were out in the water, and got stuck in a rip tide. We were both drowning. She was much bigger, and stronger than I was. After what seemed like minutes of us both struggling for our lives, I clung on to her. I pushed her down as I tried to grasp her air. And kept doing it. She begged me to stop. Kept begging, and begging. For a split second, my determination to survive, took a pause as I saw how I was killing my best friend. I then pushed her away from me so she was far enough away to swim from my deathly grip. She was strong, started making her way to the shore. I started falling behind, slowing realizing that I wouldn't be able to make it. Then, there was a moment where I knew. I was going to die. And for that moment, I felt at peace. No more struggling, no more crying. The decision was made. Moments later, a surfer plucked me onto his board. The only thing I could muster in tears was help my friend, help my friend, 
over, and over again. He did. He saved us both. My best friend, and I were never really close after that. Didn't kill her, but almost did. I still feel the guilt. It makes perfect sense that you drifted apart. However, you should be really proud of yourself for managing to separate yourself from your friend. Most people in that drowning situation are not able to do what you did. It is a very powerful instinct to push down on someone next to you when you are drowning. It is so powerful that lifeguards are specifically trained on how to avoid this happening to them when they try to save someone. It is one of the reasons why untrained people are discouraged from trying to rescue drowning people when they can't assure their own safety. You also did a great job alerting the surfer about your friend. My son is 11. I know how young that is. You need to forgive yourself, and be proud of what you managed to do. I didn't, but a co-worker of mine has killed two people. Both are not necessarily his fault. I suppose, but regardless. About 15 years ago, he got in a drunken bar fight in South Carolina. He wasn't drunk, his assailant was. They got into a disagreement over pool, the assailant was trying to hustle, and my coworker was better at pool. The guy swung a pool stick at him. My coworker backed up a few feet, pulled a knife, and when he swung at him again, he stabbed him twice, and slashed. One of the stabs managed to get him in the stomach pretty deep. From what I understand, and I'm not sure exactly how, it caused enough internal bleeding to where the guy couldn't survive it. So my coworker spent three years in prison for assault with a deadly weapon, but no manslaughter charges. About six years ago, my coworker was at home at night, and someone started beating on his front door heavily. He shouted through for the people, a man, and a woman, to leave. They came back an hour later, and he yelled back again, and told them the next time, he'd have a gun. They came back a third time, this time kicking the door, trying to break it in. Coworker snuck out the back door, snuck to the porch, and fired. He hit the woman in the leg, just above the knee. The guy grabbed her, loaded her into the car, and took off. Coworker called the cops, and explained the deal to them. The cops were aware of the two people, they were known meth heads, and were already wanted for questioning in two break-ins earlier that week. As it turned out, the woman he shot ended up bleeding to death. The driver refused to take her to the hospital because he felt she wasn't really that hurt, and resulted in her death, so he went to prison for involuntary manslaughter. The thing I've never understood is, the cops didn't bother co-worker about the shooting, questioned him but never arrested, but at that time, he was already a convicted felon with an unregistered gun. Great guy though, in all honesty. He was already a convicted felon with an unregistered gun kinda surprised he would have gotten off on that one. I'm with you on that one. He's a great dude, but he should have gotten in trouble for that. Should he have? He's a felon because he got attacked in a bar, and defended himself, with force necessary to defend himself with. He didn't get a rock thrown at him, and then start shooting, he got attacked with a melee weapon that can incapacitate, or kill with a single swing, and fought back with a melee weapon that can incapacitate, or kill with a single swing. He just happened to win. This was the result of some piece of sh prosecutor, who just wants to look tough on crime. I saw someone get hit with a pool stick once, and they ended up with epilepsy, and serious mental impairment after one swing. So it comes to defending himself again, and this time he should be punished again. No that. Sadly yes, I did have to draw, and I did have to fire on two burglars that were in my house. I work the night shift so I normally get home around 1, 1 to 30, am and most times my mother is asleep this time however I could see the living room lights were on, and two big shadows were moving around in my house. This was extremely out of the ordinary so I unclipped my 1911 from my holster, and slowly peeked in trough a window. There were two guys in their mid-forties, in my living room throwing things around, and rummaging trough drawers. One man had a handgun, and I figured I could wait, and call the police from outside the house, and keep an eye on them to make sure they don't head for the bedrooms on the second floor. 
However when I glanced at the couch I saw my mother huddled with my 12 year old niece who must have been spending the night. I knew if I waited for the cops this could go south before they got there. I was able to signal my mother to cover my niece's eyes, and ears. I waited till the two men were on the far side of the room. I turned the doorknob, and burst into the house, with my weapon pointed at the man with the pistol, I told him in a surprisingly commanding voice to drop his weapon. Then it happened it felt like slow motion I saw his arm start to flick upward, and I fired three rounds into center mass. The second man reached behind his back, and I had no choice but to put four rounds into him. I don't know if I did the right thing, and I don't know if he'll ever be able to sleep like I used to. But my mother is alive, and my niece just started high school. And that's good enough for me. My father was a Metro North Railroad engineer for many years outside of New York City. He absolutely loved his job, however menial it seemed to some people. I believe he took great pride in knowing that a large number of the public, with important occupations, relied on him, and his crew to execute their commute in a safe, consistent, and efficient manner. He never had a single accident during his 17-year tenure, not one citation, or missed a workday that wasn't planned. Unfortunately on an ordinary Monday morning a few years back, a young man decided that his life was not worth living, and that throwing himself in front of my father's train was the best way to go about ending it. This event cost me, and my family almost five years with my father. He suffered from chronic bouts of anxiety, insomnia, and even hallucinations. For long periods of time he was numb to the world, and emotionally unavailable. Unfortunately, he self-medicated for a long time, as he saw seeking counseling to be a sign of weakness. Through persistence on our side we eventually got him into therapy. Thankfully he is a lot better now, but the carnage devastated him. Of course there was nothing he could do to stop the rig, traveling in excess of 45 miles per hour, but he still felt an unbearable guilt, and was haunted, not only in his sleep, of what he saw that day. People often chide me for not feeling bad for those who commit suicide, until I elaborate on my family's story. I never advocate for suicide, but if you're going to do it, swallow a bunch of pills out in the middle of the woods, and leave a note behind somewhere. No one deserves to deal with the trauma you leave behind. I've never killed anyone, but I have been the last contact numerous people have. I was a 911 dispatcher for 10 years. My first night training on the phones, a week before Christmas, I had three people call in, on pay phones, and commit suicide. Not pranks, but actual bodies there when the police, and N showed up. I still wake up, 15 years later hearing that gunshot from the first one, from time to time. It was a 16 year old who was pissed that his parents grounded him before Christmas. Stole his grandpa's gun, called 911 to tell us what he was doing, and shot himself on the phone. For a 21 year old kid listening to it, it was life altering. I'm late as usual, and this will likely be buried. Growing up where I did, in rural Pennsylvania, boy or girl, it's a rite of passage to learn to hunt. When I was about 15, my father and I used to hunt with a bunch of his friends, and their kids, and grandkids. One turkey season our one friend's grandson who was high school age struck out on his own with a turkey call in the huge expanse of woods on their property. He was not dressed in blaze orange all camo sits in a bush, and proceeds to call turkey. His grandfather, was hunting the same woods, and heard the call, shoots blind into the bush expecting to pull out a turkey, and finds his grandson with a massive gunshot wound to his neck. He bled out right in front of the grandfather who suffered a heart attack trying to make it back to the house. This of course was before the time of cell phones. The grandfather survived but lived a miserable existence, and never forgave himself even though his grandson knew better. Jesus. Never shoot at what you can't see, right? Poor guy. I know right? Although, I've been in full orange, and still fired upon by overzealous amateurs. This was just a horrible, horrible, accident. The short and unsweet, a homeless looking guy came up to my car, while I was waiting on a light, and asked for a few dollars. I crack my window a couple of inches to talk to him, and he sticks a pistol through the crack. I pin his hand against the window with the gun pointing downwards. He lets go, yanks his hand out, 
and starts beating on the window. I panic, rack the gun, just to be sure there was something in the chamber, and shoot through my window. I hit him somewhere in center mass, and he died on the way to the hospital. I probably could have just driven away, and called 911, but I panicked instead. What happened with the cops, and stuff? I was initially detained, but a witness probably saved me when she told the cops what she saw. Because of my occupation, which is remaining secret, the black community in my area is generally against me by default, my attacker was a black male. There was calls for my prosecution but again, the witness saved me. No charges were ever filed. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell.